Welcome to hell. <laughs> That's how the convicts were greeted when they arrived in Australia. Today, I'm going to give you a glimpse of what these wretched souls went through and why, and how Australia ended up like it is. I had a passenger on an earlier seaborne journey, an American woman who came up to me and she said, Warren, she said, isn't it true that all you Australians are descended from convicts? <laughs> and I thought about it for a minute and I thought, now hang on, isn't it true that America was founded by religious zealots and today your homicide rate is 450% higher than ours? So I think we won. I'm going to be showing you some wonderful images of the convicts, some of them actually drawn by convicts. But let me set the scene. Around the time of the discovery, so-called, it wasn't really lost, but when Captain Cook found these Australian shores at the late 18th century, and when it was settled by the first fleet in England, there were over 200 crimes that were punishable by hanging to death. There were others that were lesser crimes. For those, you got sent to Botany Bay in New South Wales. Some of them were ridiculous, but most of the laws at the time were there to protect private property of a very small class of people. So, if you were an average working class family, in those days you'd be working in a rural situation and you didn't have enough to eat, it was only natural that you'd go and hunt rabbits or deer on a neighbouring property, but if you were caught, you'd be thrown into jail. Now, the jails themselves are another story altogether. And I'm going to show you some of these jails. But first of all, I mentioned that there were crimes that you were sent to Australia for. If you stole anything over the value of one shilling, you could be sentenced to Australia. Breaking an entry, obviously. Stealing a handkerchief. When you read the assizes, the reports from the Old Bailey, you'll see that they really did send young girls who stole handkerchiefs. They sent them to Botany Bay. They also sent black Africans. There were black Africans that had been sent from South Africa back to England and they didn't know what to do with them. They didn't want them. So they transported them back here. The same for Canadians. We have some Canadians here. Well, we got Canadians sent to Australia. If they were suspected of maybe causing an uprising in the British Canada. Also, they sent out people who were naval mutineers and Irish if you look suspicious. <laughs> it's true. Now, I'm going to show you one of the earliest, most infamous jails. It's called Newgate. It was in use for over 700 years. You can't imagine how awful this place was. When you read the reports, people were thrown in there and squashed together, but their horror had only just started. Here's another contemporary drawing from the times, the late 18th century, of what it was like in these horrible, horrible institutions. But there was another institution. Well, they call them the insane asylums or the lunatic asylums, the most notable being Bedlam, from where we get the words, it was Bedlam, being it was chaos. And Bedlam was no better. It was true to its name, people just thrown in there, screaming. You didn't even have to be insane 
that was the worst part about it. It's just that everything was overcrowded because you had so many of these crimes punishable by going to jail. The queues to get into the courts, the old Bailey, were ridiculous. Some crimes, such as highway robbery or outright murder, were usually, well, the, the, the um, sentence there was, was death. So we didn't get any highway robbers coming to Australia, for example. So who were these people that were sent to Australia? They were rich, they were poor, they were elderly, and they were young children. Some of them, orphan boys, who were around the age of 10, they didn't know what to do with them, so they suspected them of being pickpockets, so they just bundled them off into jail. And eventually they came up and they were given their sentences. There were also servants who stole because so many of these laws were the protection of private property. But there were also some notable people sent to Australia. And this is the sentences. Seven years if you were a minor offender, 14 if you're a little bit more serious, or 21 years, or life. But the question that everybody usually wants to know is, did they get a return fare? Nope. So we ended up with a hell of a lot of convicts. Now, the people that came, they really had to get out of England. The courts, as I said, had ways of dealing with them, but this is where they put them while they were waiting trial. They had lines of these old military ships, man of war ships, you can see where the cannons were, that they made into jails. So the River Thames had hundreds of these derelict old hulks that people lived on, chained together, given terrible food, not exercise, and of course many of them died on these hulks. So they knew that they had a real problem, that they had to do something about it. It wasn't getting any better. There's some people being marched into the prison hulk. Once again, contemporary drawings from the Times. The biggest fear when they were sentenced is that they were being sent to the other side of the world. Little did they know how fantastic Australia really is. <laughs> but that's not so funny. They were living in those prison hulks. They feared coming to Australia. But the reality was that they had fresh air. They had sunshine. They had sometimes decent food, but they also had lots of exercise because they were forced into labour. <clears throat> so it wasn't as bad as it all seemed. Now, the news spread very quickly once they started to send people to Australia that <clears throat> it really was a long way away. And it was a hell on earth, really. It may sound all right with the sunshine and the air and everything, but it was in reality a shocking journey if you made it. And also it was a shocking place when you got there. <coughs> the, um, this here is what they call a broadside. These were like the local daily newspaper. And printers used to send people to the courts, the old Bailey, and they'd scribble down what this person had done as a crime and they'd turn it into a song. And then they'd sell that on street corners. And these songs, we have about a hundred of them in the Mitchell Library in Sydney, but they were fragile pieces of paper. It's a wonder that we've got any. Nearly all told the story in the first person. So as if I'm telling you the story, if I'm the singer. I'll sing you just a little bit. <coughs> I got a little bit of the croaks, excuse me. So, um, excuse me if I 
going at that bottle frequently. So this is a typical broadside song. I was brought up in London town, a place you all know well. Brought up by honest parents, the truth to you I'll tell. Brought up by honest parents, raised most tenderly, till I became a rambling youth at the age of 23. Oh, my friends, they tried to get me out, to take me out on bail. Oh, my friends, they tried to help me, to get me out in bail. But the jury said, he's guilty, the judge to me did say. I'm sending you for seven long years to that place called Botany Bay. To see my poor old mother a standing at the bar. Likewise, my dear old father, a tearing of his grey hair, a tearing of his old grey locks, these words to me did say. Oh son, oh son, what have you done? to be bound for Botany Bay. They put me on a sailing ship one cold December morn. I never will forget the time we passed around Cape Horn. The captain said to me as he passed me by, these words to me did say, you rue your transportation, lad, to that place called Botany Bay. There is a girl in London town, a girl I know full well. And when I get my freedom, it's along with her I'll dwell. And when I get my freedom, it's married we will be. I'll bid farewell to New South Wales, farewell to Botany Bay. That's uh, typical of those songs. Now, the first fleet, they call them transports. They were the, 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 the ships were transports, the convicts were transportees. And um, Lord Sydney, who founded Sydney, he made the comment that we're sending them away for their country's 